doing some JKE today, dropped another video. We started a C-Lot yeah. segment, I don't know, a few weeks ago, and I promised to run through the basics, and I think we're only like two out of 16 <laughs> takedowns right now. So uh, C-Lot is like a system of entities and grappling. It's built around knife fighting. Uh, a lot of times we take the knife out of it when demonstrating the takedown, but that's one of the reasons it has a different look, why you don't see like, Oh, that, that wouldn't work. Why don't I just double leg the guy or going for a body tackle? And it's because the perspective is the takedown is really secondary. Yeah. yeah. The idea is like just to buckle. Like if, if you square up, one of the first ones we did last time was just a little trip. And the idea is that you just follow up and hit, not necessarily even take the person to the ground. But there's different C lock systems. There's stuff like uh, hard mount and means like, uh, like tiger. And then there's a uh, coochie which means a playful cat. And uh, those are more grab oriented systems. They, they do have arm bars. They look just like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Is it, isn't it like a pretty wide encompassing like martial art or like in, in Indonesia? I mean, you, yeah. you, you, could you get like you, YouTube like see a lot? And just yeah, so, so YouTube see a lot. I mean, hopefully you don't think this about me, but is uh, there's a lot of trash out there. Yeah. It's because sea lot is a term for general martial art in Indonesia. Oh, it is? Yeah, and so like you can find Taekwondo school over there. That's and they'll be like, we're doing sea lot. And they'll be wearing body armor and doing Taekwondo kicks. Yeah. But it is not the cultural Indonesian sea lot that's historical. It's just hmm. modern Taekwondo. So you want to look up people like uh, Rita Sawanda is pretty prominent in that area over there. Uh, the the Tatuars family. A few of them have passed away, but they're still over here. Uh, there's folks in the Philippines, because the southern Philippines is occupied by Muslims, and uh, they've always practiced Sima. That's mm. their mm. kind of cultural art. And uh, there were Muslims in Indonesia that immigrated down to the Philippines. So that's why it looks a little different, and why the practice is so focused on the body positioning and the range, not even so much as a practice of takedowns, although you want to work on it that way too. So uh, the, the next one we're going to work on, we did both Sapu Dalam and Sapu Luar. So Sapu is referring to the inside of the foot. So that was the first foot sweep that I did. And it could be ankle to ankle, shin to shin, thigh to thigh, and it could be hip to hip, and that still counts. Okay? We start at the ankle because it's the hardest, and we work our way up. Outside Sapu is the same thing, but it would be behind the foot. So if you haven't seen these yet, just go look at C-Lot segments one and two, and all that stuff will be on there. So we're gonna to go to the third one, which is Bassette. So Bassette is gonna use the heel, and can be either a back leg trip or an inside foot sweep. So we'll do the inside. So we've been doing this as part of sticky legs, which is just the practice of going into the leg without any punches being thrown, or anything like that. So I'm gonna start with my feet together where I'm one step away. So if I take one step, I'm already into the body posture. See how I'm leaning forward? If I take this foot, I'm this way. The way I measure that is I just touch with my knee. So if I can do like this yoga pose, that means when I put my foot down, I have the natural gait to be there. Because one of the biggest failures on c lock, one of the common mistakes I see is people try to do it too far away. And it never works. Like you can kick a leg that way, but just to go and approach a takedown like that is not gonna be effective at all. So uh, once you're here, if my partner gives me a guard position, all I'm gonna do is catch his wrist, push his elbow, and I'm not gonna step to try to hook his leg, see where his back foot is, I'm gonna step on the triangle there. And now all I'm gonna do is slide his foot a little bit. Okay, so you can see I'm totally upright. So the advantage is if, if Eric steps back, if I pursue Professor, see I'm in a position to take the initiative. So I'm not into like, like here, I can still do the same kind of trip, but if he recovers and I recover, we're kind of even, and maybe even he has a little bit of an advantage. So that's kind of the viewpoint of the c -Lock. So let's do, uh, we'll do a couple in a row. So I'm gonna go left leg, right leg. Same foot. Yeah, so if you give me a card again. So same thing, just let me do this. Wrist, elbow, I'm gonna step in. See how I moved the base already? Take the foot this way. Now he steps back. So all I want you to do is just move yourself up. You can even stop and measure if you need to in the beginning. He's going to give me a southpaw stance. So I'm just going to do the same thing. Forward, little pivot, take the foot. That's it. Same thing. I just adjust, no guard, nothing. Just come here. One, two. It looks really boring, but what this is doing is wiring in your range and body position this way. 
And uh, it's just a form of triangles, like uh, Kali has to triangle for. Uh, in Sila, we call it the Lanka, and that just means your position. So my feet form a triangle with your feet in the way that we step. See, that's the top and that's the bar. So sometimes the off balancing motion is one direction and the sweeping motion is a different direction. The other piece of the triangles, check this out, can you point your hand in the mirror? See, now look, my foot, this foot, and his hand form the other part of the triangle, and that's where you're going. So it's just like in jiu-jitsu, you make somebody yeah. fall, you kind of look for where the weak area is. Okay, so that's the beset, and uh, like I said, we, there's two other foot sweeps with the saku that we did a couple weeks ago, and it seems really simple, but when you start doing it, it's tough to keep the range. It's tough to off-balance the partner, you need some repetition. And in the beginning, I thought, man, this is really, really boring, it's kind of stupid, why am I doing this? But now, anytime I try to use it, I find that I'm never out of position. Oh, yeah. My body's always there. Whereas before I put this into practice, I was doing YouTube C lot also. Oh yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna move the guy. Oh, yeah. And none of it worked. None of it worked. Remember how we were talking a lot about how like that, even just having that forward motion yeah. that pertains to boxing and other yeah. things like how we roll our right. body. Right. Yeah, like if you clinch me in some way yeah. and you lean forward and you could, yeah, see? And I almost have the exact same look, but opposite. Yep. So that, that forward lean and clinch. We did that in the first forward two, uh, the first video that's called Luru. So I'll, I'll do some forward training that you can shadow box on your own. But in general, if we take this whole thing out of the way, see the same forward. Now I'm not, I'm not gonna push Professor Eric at all. I'm just gonna step where I step. And so if you move out of the way, see I, I'm back to that forward lean. So every position should have that. Like, let's do another one. So like if I go, if I go here, see if you step out of the way, I'm in the same exact position mm -hmm. every single time. Because that's the intent you need going forward to get the take out. And like you've done it to the uh do just a wrestling thing. It's yeah, like when yeah. we're here, sometimes you'll pummel and you'll catch my arm for an arm drag. Oh, for the arm drag. And then yeah, see your hand is forward. Yep. And you're gonna put all yeah, see, it's almost the same exact stuff. It's just the proximity is a little closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not like necessarily looking to throw a punch or a strike. Sure. Or anything like that, so. Yeah, it's not enough. It's complicated, but simple and boring at the same time. Yeah. But if you have faith in it and you practice the four and you practice the structure of these takedowns, they will start to work when you spar. But I think people throw it away because they've seen it in a seminar and it's yeah. like a parlor trick. And then they're trying to do it like in kickboxing yeah. distance. And they're like, oh, this just doesn't work. I'm it's just, just like Wing Chun. Yeah. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Exactly. Man, good thoughts. Anything else? No, no. It's, I, I, just, I just, I I really like that, that whole idea. And I remember when you started talking about it, it was like in the rolling context and being a completely different strike and range just using that forward. You know? Yeah. It's important where like a lot of times when we, when we roll and pivot, we're like so far oh, back. Oh, yeah, yeah, we go out back. But like when you, if you use that same exact footwork here, you are like much closer. Yeah, moving. you know, there's some really cool stuff. I thought it looked, I thought it looked really goofy. Like, let's get a little closer to sure. see. So like, uh, sometimes you can do this as like a crash, but you can be here like this. Yeah. So I'm still uh, doing, I'm still doing the lean, but I'm really just into the body, like I'm gonna throw a hook or an elbow or right. an elbow here. And see, my, now my body's taking up center. For sure. So if you try to punch or go in, yeah, see, right. now, now you go back out of the box and then you go there. So there, there's a lot to this if you're really willing to look for it. Um, but just practice, let me know what you guys think. If you have any questions on how to practice it, or hey man, I tried this on my partner, it's not working. Send us a video, man. We'll watch it. We'll try to sure. tweak it and give your input. We'll go from there. Absolutely. All right, Warriors, thanks for watching. This is the JKD Collie segment. We'll be back in a little bit Warriors later. Out, guys.